Right now in mainstream physics, there is a massive revolution about to take place. An exodus away from 40 years of wasted energy on string theory and other failed theories like loop quantum gravity, towards the realization that quantum entanglement somehow holds the key secret to quantum gravity. The physics community is about to discover how gravity really works on both a quantum and a cosmological level. So right now the race is on because the first person or group out there to come up with a correct theory of quantum gravity via quantum entanglement will not only reveal the secret mechanism by which gravity operates, they will also reveal how to turn it off and how to freely manipulate its direction and magnitude at will. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is very likely to spark a radical phase change in our technology. This is the so-called quantum leap that we've all been waiting for. The year 2020 is right around the corner, and as children of the space age, we were promised hoverboards, flying cars, Millennium Falcons, and all sorts of other cool stuff that for some reason never happened. But now things are finally coming into focus for many within mainstream physics who have been following the recent developments on quantum gravity and entanglement, and they are quickly realizing that we are on the verge of one of the most incredible breakthroughs in physics since Einstein and Niels Bohr. For Einstein, the central problem of the quanta was that they could be entangled and therefore function as a unified whole across limitless distances of space and time, violating a fundamental principle of general relativity theory, the constancy and finiteness of the speed of light in a vacuum. To Einstein and his co-authors Rosen and Podolsky, this so-called spooky action at a distance phenomenon could not fit with general relativity, for if quantum entanglement were true, then relativity must be wrong. In physics, we call this the EPR paradox. And when the Elaine aspect entanglement experiments of the 1970s demonstrated that Einstein was wrong, about that aspect anyway, physics began its search for a reformulation of general relativity theory to rectify this. Enter string theory, loop quantum gravity, and the like. This is the crisis in physics right now, and there's an overall sense that we are on the verge of a major breaking point once we untangle this whole entanglement business. Just like the discovery of quantum mechanics brought about the advent of radio, television, cathode ray tubes, the transistor, solid-state electronics, computers, etc., this new discovery promises to usher in yet another golden age of technologies beyond our wildest dreams. Only science fiction has remotely come close to predicting it. Welcome to the era of entanglement. We are about to nail down gravity with an exact theory of what physics really is, and it's about to unleash a tidal wave of new technologies. And right now we have a unique opportunity to become a driving force in this new entrepreneurial frontier. Because the team I am putting together is at least 15 years ahead of the game, and we already have a well-developed theory based on quantum entanglement. Ken Griggs, a scientist I've collaborated with on prior podcasts and videos, began researching discrete theories of quantum gravity back in the early 90s. And what he discovered was an entirely new way of doing and looking at physics, and what is actually going on in particle interactions. This revolutionary new theory gives us real answers without the perturbation theory of the standard model, and takes Feynman diagrams to a whole new level. We are confident that this new way of doing physics will eventually become the new standard model. And I am proud to be the one to help introduce it to the world. Phoenix is the physics of entanglements, networks, and information exchanges. The theory was developed by Ken over the past 20 years and is rooted in topology and combinatorics. Phoenix treats all of elementary particle physics as a series of entangled vertices with set matching rules. And these vertices with lines connecting them are in fact just another way of visually representing particles and their respective matrices. We call them graphs. This is why matrix mechanics works so well for describing quantum theory. And the higher order graphs also explain away dark matter as the inert matrix formations which don't interact with normal matter but still gravitate. There are even bigger cosmological implications, but we'll save that for another video. Let's begin with a fundamental question. What is a measurement? Phoenix says that when a physicist goes out into nature and performs a measurement, what he is essentially doing is counting structures. And his tools of the trade, his mathematics and laboratory instruments, are simply methods that work for counting those structures. 
What the ancient Greek philosophers were speaking to when they talked about the atomos was the idea of the most basic, indivisible structures in nature. As it turns out, there was something smaller than atoms. Those atoms are composed of protons and neutrons, which are in turn composed of quarks, which one would assume are composed of something much more basic and purely mathematical. And that line of thinking led us to vertices. A vertex is the essence of the atomos. Vertices are the most basic building blocks of the universe, and what we should now be calling atoms in place of atomic nuclei. So let's start with a single vertex, with three degrees of freedom, and we'll call each leg X, Y, and Z, for visualization purposes. And say that in each of these degrees of freedom, our vertex is either connected back to itself positively, a loop, entangled with another vertex, an edge, or connected to itself negatively, designated by an arrow. From this, we can come up with a map of all the different combinations of possible connections, and we find that there are 10 possibilities, or 10 single vertex building blocks, or atoms. If you begin to play around with this new set of building blocks, observing some basic rules, you'll discover a system of interactions which looks exactly like particle physics, with up and down quarks, electrons and positrons, and the W plus and W minus particles associated with weak nuclear interactions. Here we have electroweak unification, and here we have strong nuclear force unification. At the fundamental level of physics, all matter in the known universe is simply bundles of vertices tied together in these entangled states, which communicate through a massive web of iterating information exchanges, like a giant entangled tapestry which threads all the universe together. The force of gravity, or quantum gravity, is now being understood as a sort of entropy which evolves out of quantum entanglement in higher order systems. So case in point, if quantum entanglement holds the key to quantum gravity, the best way to test that theory is to shut off quantum entanglement and see what happens to gravity. And Phoenix theory has now given us a working theoretical basis on which to build and achieve just that. According to Phoenix, antimatter is not quite what we thought it was. Antimatter is built upon the same vertex structure as matter, but it differs in the way that it entangles outwardly to the rest of the universe. This is that second notion of time that all these theorists are still struggling to explain. Antimatter terminates itself in time reverse to ordinary matter. It has the same entangled structure as ordinary matter, except that the loops are replaced with arrows. In the matrix form, the numbers become negative. This theory not only shows us what antimatter is, it also makes new predictions on what it can be used for. Antimatter, according to Phoenix, actually breaks the entanglement between ordinary matter across that boundary and terminates the ends of the thread, so to speak. It isolates you inside of a negative block on the matrix. So by exploiting this quantum disentangling property of antimatter, surrounding the surface of an object with a veil of antimatter, the right type of antimatter that won't annihilate and destroy the matter you're trying to do this to, we can theoretically disentangle regions of space-time, thereby reducing, negating, or reversing the effects of gravity locally within that bubble. We now know how the Dirac holes, or negative energy states, create the conditions necessary for the Alcubierre warp drive theory to work at much lower energy states than previously predicted. And now we want your help to actually build one. The Dirac C is nothing more than a nest of entangled vertices. These are not infinities, ladies and gentlemen. Grab your surfboards. We're gonna ride some new waves. This type of technology is coming very soon. And with Phoenix Theory, we have a unique 20 year advantage on that market. One of the first experiments we would like to perform based on predictions of the theory will be levitating a mass of silicate crystals using a combination of lasers, magnetic fields, and our patent pending proprietary antimatter production and confinement technology. In other words, we are going to float rocks, and not just small rocks either. We also want to be a backup test bed and a second party verification system for other groups out there attempting to break the mold with new technologies and those who may have discovered new things but don't yet fully understand the physics behind them. We want to bring clarity to these fields of research with real science and real experiments. 
It's time for us to step away from the blackboard or the video editor and step into the laboratory and really start getting down to business on all this science and technology that we keep talking about but still aren't doing anything about. Talk is cheap and good quality hard work isn't. But it can pay off for the investors if they are getting back what they paid for. And right now, there's a lot of money and attention being given to false prophets and leaders who have yet to show us anything new or remarkable in terms of science or physics. And from our perspective, do not have the right type of direction, insights, work ethic or integrity to accomplish this goal of unifying our technology with that of an advanced civilizations. With new physics, which they don't have, we do. You can't meet with aerospace companies and have serious talks about building a craft without first testing the technology for others to see and developing a proof of concept to work off of. Right now, there's a serious lack of solid foundation in science and experiment, and we want to step up and fill that void and supply that foundation. So Ken and I have been talking, and we've decided to launch an open-sourced, privately-owned LLC dedicated to the advancement of humanity through the research and development of advanced propulsion and energy technologies. This company will start small as a laboratory and intellectual property leaseholding company, and will eventually blossom into a full-on aerospace production company, not an entertainment company. We have a new way of doing physics based on quantum entanglement, and we want to use it to develop the cutting edge of real, highly advanced propulsion and energy technologies, well beyond anything that's ever been done before. To get involved, invest, and learn more about the theory, visit our website at www.hoverbrothers.com. Hover Brothers is a co-ed, multiracial, multicultural, multi-oriented, diversity-embracing international collaboration on future space technologies. In 1895, one of the world's foremost authorities on science and technology, Lord Baron von Kelvin, famously remarked, I can state flatly that heavier-than-air flying machines are impossible. Just eight years later, in 1903, two brothers who owned a bicycle company in Ohio and happened to have just the right physics model were able to prove the entire world wrong and jumpstart a whole new era of technology. But it all started with that one proof of concept at Kitty Hawk that changed the world forever. And just like the Wright brothers, we intend to usher in a whole new age of science and technology, of the people, by the people, and for the people. If there was ever a time or a cause that was more important or pivotal to human history, our development, our understanding of gravity and the universe, and the very real possibility of finding solutions to some of the world's biggest problems, that time is now. The most important thing that you can do to help is to share this video. Spread it like wildfire. Share, share, and share it again a week from now. Until every physicist and mathematician in the world has seen it and actually sat down with the graphs and matrices and experimented with the new structure of particle physics that we are presenting here in this video and in the papers on the website which is the first of three groundbreaking papers on Phoenix that we will be releasing in the near future. In this first paper, we show you how Phoenix derives special relativity theory. The second paper will show you how to derive quantum field theory. And then the third paper will derive the holy grail of quantum gravity. Our primary objective right now is to secure enough crowdsource capital investment to fund our preliminary experiments, get a prototype off the ground, and produce that Kitty Hawk moment for the world with something that we can then patent, market, and sell for more funding to pay back our initial investors as we proceed to the next phase of experiments and production. I hope you're all ready for it, because playtime is over. It's time to get down to business. Hover Brothers will succeed for the same reasons that others have failed. We have a solid theory, we have a plan, and we have a dangerous amount of physics knowledge, and we're not afraid to use it or talk about it. We look forward to answering your questions, your emails, and working with you to kickstart this revolution. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Stay up to date because things are already developing very fast. Thanks for watching. Enjoy those new puzzle pieces. Dr. Cochran, there's a phoenix.